Today we'll talk about um, Ghost Wager introduction and its wins and pitfalls. I've worked with Ghost Wager in a couple of different companies and there were a lot of fun, if you know what I mean. And I will share some of this experience with you. A few words about me. My name is Ilya Kaznachev and I'm a remote backend software engineer. I'm the founder of uh, Golan Kvoronish in Russia, in the city where I live. And uh, I'm host of uh, That Namespace podcast. Also, I organize local conferences and meetups, and I really like coffee. So uh, let's have a closer look uh, at what Swagger is. Golang is widely used uh, for web applications. That means that your backend have, has to communicate with its clients. To do that, both sides need to know how to communicate with each other. And there are a lot of ways to do that. Along with modern approaches like GraphQL, JPC, etc., we still have the good old REST, which is de facto standard for public APIs. The REST stands for Representational State Transfer for Creating Web Services, as Wikipedia says. These services and their clients should know about how to communicate with each other, or, in other words, they should know the RESTful API structure. And here comes Swagger, the API specification standard based on JSON schema and Open API. Actually, Open API and Swagger are just different names for the same standard. Swagger is a YAML-based specification for RESTful APIs, and it may look like this. Or probably, it will look like this. But you can view it in a more human-friendly form, like this. So let's talk about why we use Swagger. When you work as a team, you have to constantly exchange knowledge about your work. In addition, you have to constantly synchronize with each other. It's okay in a team of one or two, but it's less fun in a team of 10, for example. To do that, you need uh, to have something more than just, hey, buddy, I've just changed the request parameter name. And the Swagger is the right tool to do that. You can just push an specification version to the repository and anyone on the client side can use it. You don't have to talk to each other over and over again. Just use the single file to do all of this communication stuff for you. Another problem is the time you spend to write all of these API infrastructure related code. Um, it's a real headache in tight languages like Go. Luckily, uh, there are many code generators for popular languages to build all of the boring API code. And for Go, most popular library is a Go Swagger. So let's talk about how we use it. The Ghost Swagger itself can do a lot of things like code generation from schema, both client and server, schema generation from code, schema validation, and so on and so forth. But we'll talk uh, about the server side generation. By default, it generates a main.go file, but you can also avoid it like this by specifying uh, dash dash exclude main flag if you don't want to start from a generated uh, main.go file. We don't want to do that uh, because we have our own main.go file and you can do it this way. This command will generate all the handlers and data types described in your specification. Sure, you can specify a path to a Swagger file, or what to generate, what to avoid, package name and so on, all of these options. And um, in simple case, the code structure will look like this. There are all your data models, request and response structures, operations that are endpoints like get order item or post order item, etc., and some core data. Here you can see the file called configure underscore your service name .go. It contains the configuration of the server, parameters, middlewares, authentications, etc. Ghostwagger promises to not overwrite this file, but since we don't um, use it, and later I will tell you why, we want to replace it as well. So we do it this way. First, removing all generated code, regenerating it again, 
and cleaning up the module because we use modules. Mm, and we are all set. Or not? The answer is no. There are some problems. First, the Ghost Wagger is more like a framework than a library, and it means that you must fit within its structure. The second is that the tool generates hundreds of types and methods for everything. So after adding a path parameter, you probably will find yourself renaming the method from new post candidate document ID approved not found to new post candidate candidate ID document ID approved not found. <laughs> That's my story. And the last thing is that generated code is very incompatible with any popular HTTP libraries with all of your sweet middlewares and handlers. It, so it can solve one problem, but it can also cause another. And there are some solutions and workarounds for these problems I found so far. So let's fix them all. First, you may, wait, you may want to use uh, standard HTTP handlers. Uh, to use them with Ghostwagger handlers, you have to do a trick with the wrapper. Here, a custom wrapper structure implements um, generated responder interface, so you can use it as a returning parameter in a generated handler. Here, I use the HTTP request. Probably I can show it. Yes. Mm. Uh, I use... Mm, HTTP request from a parameter and a response writer from the responder interface. You can see how I plug the standard Prometheus metric handler uh, in a generated handler. Uh, you also may want to use some middlewares with a standard HTTP.handler interface. There are two ways to do that. First, just use the add middleware for method, which adds a middleware to certain method and certain pass. Uh, so here I set my metrics handler function as a handler for generated uh, instruments get metric handler um, method, which is a get method uh, with metrics um, pass with an instrument stack in uh, Swagger scheme, schema. Then I add my middleware to the metrics endpoint with a get method here. And then I just need to initialize the server and run it. But probably if it's not enough, you can go further and use a custom handler like Chi. So you can just specify as complex rules as you want and then return the router back to the server. Please note that the configure API uh, method fills some defaults inside the server structure and should be called before set handler. So if you want to have more control, you have to do um, it by yourself. Here I'm getting the main uh, API handler and um, calling API surf uh, with a nil parameter here, yeah. Mm, then I create a Qi router and setting up my middlewares. Middleware recover, recover, for example, from the Qi library and ALS middleware will, uh, that will run only for user requests. Then I mount mm, the Swagger API handler to the router and return it to the server. So it's kind of intermediate between API settings and server settings. Uh, as I said before, Ghostwagger wants to be a central point of your application and initiate the whole application in a single config file. I don't want to do that because I use Swagger as a pluggable library. So I have to do this stuff from outside of this uh, configure underscore your service name .go file. It's not hard. You just have to configure parameters first, then server parameters. Uh, but please know that out of the box, Ghostwagger does a lot of initialization stuff in configure API method, so that it may replace some of your settings. To avoid it, don't call the configure API method at all, and um, you you have to take care of some internal data initialization. But don't, but don't worry, it's possible 
and you still have the generated configure API method where you can check how it's done by default. So um, you may notice that Ghostwagger generates long and ugly names for methods and types. And the problem is um, that if you will change the HTTP method or parameter name or something like that, it will create a new set of about 100 methods and types with new names. So here I generate, it generates names with get store order order ID items because it's a handler for get method and pass uh, store slash order slash order ID slash items. And if you will rename the pass, uh, it will regenerate the whole set of methods. But you can avoid it by specifying uh, operational ID tag. It will force Ghostwagger to generate the same names again and again. Uh, in this example, I will. it will be the short and clean get order items. The same goes for handler functions and so on. And for me, it's much more beautiful. The next is, uh, the next are validity checks. It's easy to confuse uh, incompatible types and checks by mistake. Ghostwagger will generate it without a warning, but it will lead to a compilation error like that. Here is a problem because I use numeric validation with a string parameter. So the proper validation name will be maxlang. To avoid that, just remember which type has which checks. So here is a cheat sheet for you. You may take a screenshot or whatever. So nothing special. You can also find it in uh, JSON schema docu documentation. Uh, Next are extensions, or I would call them tricks. It's a feature of open API to add vendor specific tags. In our case, there are Ghostwagger specific parameters, so you may use them to say the, the generator what you exactly want to see in the code, like omitting empty nullable or uh, not nullable um, parameters and so on. Next, shortcuts. Often you will use the same structures like a common error structure, but the Ghostwagger will generate you code specific for each method. I mean, new get order error um, bet request, for example, and so on and so forth. But you can write your own response helper that will implement responder interface. So, so this function will return the same responder for the same error structure, and you can use it the same way in each handler. And the last thing are unit tests. So you may cause, uh, it may cause some questions on how to test generated handlers and so on. And the answer is handlers are just functions, so test them as just functions. Here we have a handler, that returns some uh, entity by its ID if found. Uh, you can write test cases as usual, and I prefer the table testing. So here is a set of test cases. You may see the request parameter uh, here, um, the order ID that you can specify in my table tests. And uh, here are a good case and a bad case. So, and here I just put the request structure as an input uh, parameter and then read the response using uh, JSON producer because I expect to get JSON response. So for example, for XML, you can use XML producer and so on. Uh, and at the end, I just check these values I use testify here because I don't want to, to manually check uh, JSONs and so on. And if you want to test the HTTP request structure like cookies or something like that, you can create a new request and pass a parameter uh, HTTP request, which exists in any gen Ghostwagger generated uh, handler parameters and everything which is valid for HTTP handler uh, will wo work here. In conclusion, I would say that despite its complexity, 
Ghostwagger is a really good and robust tool and it's nice to use even in production. But sometimes it may surprise you. That's it. Here are some helpful links. JSON schema specification, Swagger specification, Ghostwagger documentation itself, and the link to the presentation slides. So thank you for your attention and I'd like to answer your questions.